Oh hi, it's Fukai and welcome to a brand new series for the Guild 3, where today we're going to be doing a barber start on Dijon. I know I probably butchered that pronunciation, but it is what it is and it's fine. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a barber shop on the new patch after it has been completely nerfed. I shouldn't say completely nerfed, it's just been... It's no longer like 75 gold for doing absolutely nothing. It's now 25 gold for doing absolutely nothing. And then you get an additional 65 if you produce soap. So in other words, for doing nothing with resources, it has profit. But without that, it doesn't. So the first things first, we're going to be searching for our wife. And we're going to be finding Edith here. And Edith is a... Nice little strong women, and, you know, kind of intelligent, but strong. And that is what I want, is strong women. And this is simply because considering I'm trying to play the eugenics game, as I'm not 100% sure how the eugenics rolling works for the actual character's stats. But, I, oh yeah, I forgot how close she was on here. But I forgot that, a, uh, or I'm not sure how the stats work for rolling. I do know that there's exceptional genes that you want to be looking for on your character that gives you your additional stats if you get lucky on it. But there's also the, like, if you have a higher stat, your kid has a higher chance of rolling that. Anybody knows how the eugenics work, I would love to know in the comments below. And while you're there in the comments below, don't hesitate to give it a like and a subscribe and pass it on to your friends while you are there. It really helps the channel out. And what is this, Noelle? Noelle, you tries to take my wife wool. <laughs> yeah, she rejected me. That doesn't mean anything. And you're going to see here why the guild systems... The guild's RNG system is just annoying, to say the least. And I wish that it would queue up my action, because considering... If there's a line of AIs fighting to get the woman's attention, I have to sit here and babysit it rather than it says target busy. It should say target busy and then wait and then go and talk. But it's fine. Now, if you want an easier start on the guild, I think that the easiest way to start is to actually start as a woman and then find a male to marry. Uh, you have less competition and you have a better pick of the litter when it comes to stats from what I find. And now that the barbershop has finished, we're going to upgrade and buy our characters. And one thing that I messed up on is... Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I'm on hard mode. Employees are more expensive. I probably should have grabbed customer satisfaction, but it's fine. And I know I'm annoying people with the it's fine, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get this wife, and you can see... She's fallen for me, fallen for me, but it doesn't take long for her to get pissed off at me. And, you know, I'm going, all right, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Especially considering I don't want to have somebody come up and try to take Edith from me. Edith is mine, and mine alone. And here it is where I gamble. I'm like, okay, no, I'm not going to kiss on the cheek, but I will, you know, sweet talk her. Do the nice, smooth, sweet talk, 76%. I got this. I got this. You're so beautiful and educated. You stand out from all the others. And yeah, yeah, absolutely right. So, nice little success. And it's here that things start going awry. I'm like, okay, marriage is only 65%. Uh, whatever, we're going to see. Kiss on the cheek, 57. I'm going to gamble, gamble, gamble. Smack, minus 20. Ooh, yeah, that didn't, that didn't work out. Yes, sir. That was the gumble, that was the gumble. And I'm gonna sweet talk, try to, you know, salvage some of this stuff, and... Okay, 71%, still not bad. It's not the worst, but not bad. And... You will see... Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Edith just gets pissed off at me. Thank you. What have I done? Minus 13. I'm like, oh god, this is going to take so many... Re this is going to take a lot. I'm going to sweet talk, see if this fixes anything, and what happens? Okay, I got a success, 19%. It's still pretty good. Everything's on cooldown. We're going to compliment. We're going to, you know, we can salvage this. We can salvage this. It's fine, 75%. You know, this is the fourth roll on it, so statistically... Statistics are not on my side here. 
And yeah. No, 300. We're not there yet. Not there yet. And you can tell, doesn't like poetry all of a sudden. Okay, this is where I'm just saying, you know what? Minus 13. It's going to take me forever to salvage this. I'm just going to Hail Mary. Mary. 38%. Should not work. Shouldn't do anything. And this is Guild 3's red number generator. I was ready to just restart the recording. And nope, 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 nope. 38% chance we get married. Done. Success. 90% to, to actually get married. Nope, you fail. This is Bukai's luck. Is Bukai's luck. And no, she doesn't even want to kiss me. But she will make a child. <laughs> this game's logic just makes no sense. And I would honestly prefer the guild system where it just builds up. Um, the chances of failure just feels arbitrary. Like, I mean, I get it. I get it. The guild was way too easy. Way too easy. But this one's just... There's no skill to it. There's no, like... It's just you're rolling dice. And it feels like you're artificially behind or you've wasted your time when everybody else succeeds. I'm not a big fan of it. And I'm checking out to see what my wife's values are and I'm noticing, oh, wow. As I thought... 12% exceptional genes. She has an ability to learn that's pretty high, and her speed's pretty high, that gets affected by dexterity. But the most important thing there, holy crap, she has 12% exceptional genes. And I believe I had like eight. Uh, this means that we have a good chance for kids. We have a good chance for kids, and we shall see. We shall see. Now, the barber shop isn't really doing too hot right away, and... Now that my kids have leveled up and we have gotten the waifu prego, I decide that, okay, so if the barber shop hasn't been producing anything currently or serving any customers right now, it's not making the most of money, I think I need to search around and see what I can do to make additional cash with my characters. Usually, at this point, I would send my guy to basically just go and boast but instead right now i'm taking the flowers from my house and dropping them off into the barber shop so that way these guys can go and make the good old-fashioned soap a lot easier to make a little bit of extra dough and then once my character has made it to that point i'm then going to take edith and the perfect job for a pregnant woman gambling on the fact that she could lose her child another mechanic that i wish was explained more is the miscarriages mechanics and role uh, I've had it happen a couple times, but it doesn't happen always. And we are going to send her all the way down to the Grove, as well as Ojai. Now, the reason for this is that we're going to be collecting deer. This is a supplementary income, and you can see that the barbershop is now starting to gain customers and make a little bit of cash. But, it's not fast enough for my liking, so I'm combining this with two of the best starts, which is harvesting and good old-fashioned barbary. So everybody's collecting the flowers and we have people waiting for services and I kind of am unsure what I should do, whether I should go to the actual shop, whether I should, what I should do. And so I do pull Bukai off of the actual deer and it takes me a little bit before I can get him back to the barber shop in order to get him to actually doing something. And Edith as well doesn't really seem to want to collect the deer and you know this starts just a little bit rough and was not efficient wasn't the best as i throw bukai back on the deer i just go you know what screw it let the people finish collecting the flowers let them go back and then we will buy and continue going as we go but then i see oh my god there's a lot of people there like i need to serve these customers because during each one that i fail is a reputation loss and I need to pull Bukai back. You can see three people waiting by my barber shop, waiting for services, and I'm I'm not ready for it. I really am not. However, what I do is I decide to pull Stephine back, and then I hit the resume, which dumps all of the stuff that she has, and I'm going to pull Lucy back, which will do the same thing. Now, this will bring about 28 and 20 to the good old-fashioned barber shop, so I can build soap as I wait, but it's still not the most efficient path that I could be taking. I do like, though, that the barbershop has been nerfed. So it is now... It's now on par, I find, with all the other businesses for the start. Or not all of them, but with the others. That it's not stupidly broken, but it's still... It's still a very profitable start and a very fun start. 
And there is Lucille, that is, or Lucy, that is now collecting people, and we need 300 on our cash. Mm. It's going to be a bit before we can get these people. And 25 and 65, 292. <sighs> Jerks. Short change in me. Just give me a tip, and then I will steal my employees' tips. And it's here that I realize I made a little bit of a mistake. I didn't put the actual barber soap back on, which can actually keep them to... So that way when they're done, they'll go back to making the actual soaps. As right now, we don't have the long string of customers. And we're going to go back to collecting our deer in order to make the money. And once we've hit 300, we are going to hire an additional worker in order to keep with our attendance and being served. The barber shop is just really good income at the beginning. As for those of you who have seen my barber shop guide up at the top, there will be a link there for those of you who haven't. I highly suggest you take a look at it and watch it, as that guide is a. Mwah. I mean, it's a little bit out of date because it's not like I said the 75, but it's still it's a really good guide to follow for your barber shop, or at least a start into keeping up with the AI and even surpassing the AI. Now you need to have the actual soaps. You can, if you wish, not even produce soap. Just leave all your employees AFK and all they will do is serve customers and send them over to like basically a storage to buy soap and then sell it at the actual barber shop. Some people still say, ah, it isn't worth it. Just let the guys continue to do it. Uh, that might be the mid game strategy. In the early game strategy, you have to produce soap from what I find. Otherwise you just you have too much wasted time. It doesn't take much micromanagement. You only have one business to manage, so there's not much for you to do with one business. It doesn't matter to actually spend a little bit of the time early. I understand once you have a conglomerate of businesses and you have an empire going, that you might not want to have your characters producing soap all the time. It just slows down your money flow. As the whole point behind the barber shop is that it's a two-fold swing. You get a bunch of cash, or at least decent cash, and you get a reputation boost. The reputation boost allows you to continuously do illegal acts or criminal things that affect other people making them not like you, but they end up liking you because you're doing everything else. And that is the goal with this Let's Play, is going to be showing the good old fashioned, I'm the barber, I keep everybody clean, I'm the monk, I keep everybody, or not the monk, I'm the healer, I help everybody's wounds and injuries, don't look at me, the fact that you got an axe in your face. Not my fault, it was my employee that swung it at you. Don't worry about it. But that's for the future videos, and that is the plan for this playthrough. And hopefully, I'm going to knock on some wood that we don't have another patch coming in that borks this save file, where we can actually play through it right to the Sovereign ship, and right through to getting one million dollars, which... Probably isn't going to be that long, as if you talk about raw cash versus net worth, net worth doesn't take long. Doesn't take long at all. Like, I think this business is already worth something like 20k, so that just puts it in perspective. Now, my micromanagement for this is mainly to just watch all of my barbers as they keep going into the grove, telling them to leave the grove, go back to the barber shop, then when they run back to the barber's hut, you hit the resume work, and then that automatically makes them deposit, and then they see a customer, the order of operation says, customer needs to be served, served customer, done. Check, check, check. That is essentially how this works. So you can see here, there's the values of our business. Uh, 20K, I think, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a mistake, but 6.2K to 8.6K. That's about how much the businesses are worth right now, which, decent chunk. And there you go, plus 70 plus 25, plus 90 for the barber soap, because I moved up into the front of the store barber soap up to 150%. I believe this increases the value of the actual sale. Just really, really good. Up that to 150. You need to do it. And make sure that when you, if you look there on your services, the max number of service workers is capped out to the amount of characters that you have working. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have two guys collecting, one person doing the actual piece. You want to have that three. That is the key to the barber shop: is to continuously make sure that you have all your customers serve. Doesn't matter about anything else. Serve your customers. So you can see here that we've been collecting the deer, and I move nine towards Bulkai, 
And I'm going to move Ohai Bukai all the way down to, let's see what map we have, Old Palm. So it's here that I'm going to be checking my bearings, and I kind of know the Dion. Again, I butchered that. My apologies. But I can see that, okay, so we're going to run down to Old Town. This map's actually kind of interesting looking. And if you want to navigate around the map, if you double click on the actual spots or right click with your character, you will send them to that spot on that map. That only really works for the pins on the map. So the day is almost over and you can see that I do miss one employee, one worker, which could have been a little bit of cash and a little bit of a minus on my reputation, but it's not a big deal. Thankfully, they have fixed the bug, or not even really bug, but the issue where your people won't work in the barbershop, but you'll have a lineup of customers after hours where people will all just go to work. Makes sense. I wish that, one thing that I wish that they could let you add, one thing that I wish that they would let you add is a simple factor where I can set the hours of my business in operations. So in other words, some businesses I don't want to be running in prime time. I might want to be running after everybody's finishing work. I think that would be a nice little addition, but you know, this game's already losing a ton of money and the new devs are on a tight schedule, so I doubt that'll be implemented, but it would be a neat little idea. And Speaking of the idea, here we are running through Old Town, and it's a nice little picturesque run, as you can see, and here we are to the Old Town market. Selling nine deer, you can see why we've been selling this thing, considering that's 693 gold for, or 699 gold yeah. for a little bit of work. Not, not too much. And all I need to do is send him right back down to Edith, and we shall see. Now, double-clicking on my businesses to quick access, we're going back to see, because it is 11. I want to see how much, what my business is doing. And it's making some rose water. It's making some other little bit of stuff, or it's making soap. Rose water is not really worth it. It just seems like you want to just build soap. And with the click of the day in the summer 1402, we now have a boy named Arnold. And Arnold has he's all right he's strong but not not great and so i decided to send that my edith to go and kiss within marriage to bukai and we're gonna follow along as she runs magically knowing where he is all the way up all the way up into a smooch and looking at the score you can see that i am at the bottom i've always been at the bottom because of the start but I really can't get away from here right i'm at the bottom and I do not plan to stay there long. Now you want to do the kiss within marriage because you can see there plus 5% fertility boost as that makes it easier to pump out the children. I waste a bit of money here hiring a transporter. Um, I was thinking that I could get him to maybe buy flowers, buy soap, but it's just a waste of cash and waste of employees' wages as I end up firing him later. I don't recommend doing that. My thought process was, like I said, just to buy soap and keep my characters going. But then I thought, I'm only at, I'm only at one business. Like it's not really worth it. So here I'm going through my actual storage, and I decide I don't want you selling soap, but I want you to sell the flowers once I get too much. That should be backwards. I should allow him to. Not, or sorry, I should not allow him to sell flowers. I should tell him to sell the barber soap once they are over 60. Keep a steady supply of 60 in the store and 60 in the actual shop. That will make sure that you have enough for all of the characters that come in and people that pass by to buy. And huzzah, we have now expecting the baby. And with the new baby expected, we are now going to again risk the pregnancy and go have our hunt down game. Yep. If you're pregnant, the best thing to do, go hunt deer. <laughs> yep. Go my deer. Hunt the deer. Yeah, this game's kind of funny on there. You could go out and literally boast about your achievements and miscarriage, but you could go crawling around, pulling, hunting down deer, and nope, nope, you're fine. And so I set Edith and Ohai back to collecting the deer. 
and we are trying to make as much cash as possible because in the morning I'm gonna lose a fair bit of money once the wages start coming in and I might even go negative to start not really looking like like I said not the best start at the very beginning on here it's been a bit fumbly and oh, okay for a second there I thought that guy was vandalizing my business I'm like how didn't I see that but no he's just a juggler yep just a juggler and there we go 4 a.m everybody's back to work which is nice 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 it seems like every business in the guild is tied to the time to start I could be wrong, like there might be other ones like the rogue buildings that have a later start and later finish. I'm not sure. I just remember that back in the guild 1 or the guild 2 you had like some patron buildings would run at like start at 4, some would start at 5, others would start at 9, like you'd have different start times and it was nice. Felt more like a city rather than okay 4 o'clock everyone get back to work. So looking through I now have some characters on waiting for business. So, or waiting for the services. So I decided to send my characters back to the actual barber shop with all of their flowers. And then once they reach there, you then hit the good old fashioned resume working. So they're all on pause. Take all the flowers out of the inventory. Make sure that's quite important. And hit the resume working. And then what that does is that tells them immediately, okay, order of operations, customer, serve customer, done. And there we go, flowers are in, and resume working, attend to customers, and flowers are in, and resume working, attend to customers. With 37 soap, that is a decent chunk of cash that we could be making, and then we've also got a decent supply of flowers. This will allow them to keep making soap and keep transitioning and selling to the customers. We are about to make some serious, serious money. With three customers being served and treated, we are about to make, like you see, 25.65, nice. And plus one reputation, which is the biggest piece that you are really after, as reputation is harder to gain than the actual cash. Early game cash is king, but building that slow reputation build up is important. And with 732, we're not really making enough of the cash, so I'm gonna take my deer away from Edith and give it to Bukai, who's then going to check to see where is the best place to sell these deers. And it seems to be Old Town at 84 again. So we're going to go ahead and run into Old Town Market and right click on there and run all the way to the market. Save the game. And it looks like somebody's building either a croft or a robber's den up on behind my good old fashioned barber shop. Not the best businesses to have around as they take up a huge chunk of real estate in that area. So you can see that there's a nice steady supply of customers going into the barber shop and just getting their services, getting a little bit of cash. It's nickel and diming, like being treated again, three, someone gets served again, three, attending to customers. We've got 60 and 45 of the soaps inside of here we have a nice steady cash flow. And what I could be doing with Bukai once I'm finished selling the deer is, and speaking of the devil, we're over here into dumping the deer. So I'll send him back to Old Town, click, and there we go, 1,187 gold. Now, sending him back to the deer, I could actually send him instead to my shop to sell the good old fashioned soap. But right now, since I do have Andre, I'm going to use Andre to sell some of the soap. Even though, bit of a mistake. I'm just, I didn't need Andre to do this task. I could just keep running Ohai as my good old fashioned recruiter, as my good old fashioned transport for all of my businesses to start. But it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to actually have him do this task and we are back to collecting what looks like some flowers, and yeah. Not the best, I gotta tell them, okay, stop, go back, resume working, and you can see that I'm still on the bottom, simply considering I don't have very many titles. I'm not high up, I'm not doing too hot on the cash, and I don't really have the best of businesses flowing for the time for now compared to my opponents. It's, this will change real fast to them. And there we go, 20 deer, as we are going to collect more deer when I could have been selling my soap, like I said. 
but it's fine. I spent the 300. I might as well use him. And I do believe that once I dump in the flowers, I do sell some of the soap. I'm not... No, doesn't look like I did. I apologize for that. I could have sworn I did. So I'm looking at my business's revenue, and you can see there that our businesses have lost a total of 1903, which isn't that good. This round, I am profitable despite investing into the building and the employees' wages. It's going to take a couple rounds to fully be profitable unless I sell some of this soap, and that is exactly what I end up deciding once I figure out, okay, I need to make a little bit of cash, a little bit of cash. So I sent him down to, I believe it is, Old Town Market. So he decides to run all the way over towards Newtown Market with 40 of the soaps, which will be a nice chunk of cash. It's not going to be game-breaking cash, as some of the other production businesses can be, but it's still a nice service-oriented and a little chunk of cash. And speaking of chunks of cash, we are going to dump into customer satisfaction, despite the fact that this could hurt me. Could hurt me down the road. But customer satisfaction is huge. That makes people come back. That makes people pay your absurd prices, especially for a service industry. And we're going to send all of our people back to the barber shop with their flowers. It's a bit of an annoyance, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. You don't have to run the business like this. You could just leave it on attend to customers and just have four AFK employees and buy the soap. That's all you need to do. And there we go. We're treating all the customers, treating the customers. And we now have a kid that is born, which not very intelligent, not very, he's an all right kid, but he's got low stats. It looks like he's below a 15. and. You don't want to kiss. You don't want to kiss, but you'll make another child. No problem. No problem at all. Well, this game is weird. <laughs> and Andre has made it down to the market in Newtown. And you can see here we are making, you know, 886. Not insane money, like I said, but still enough of a cash influx that it helps. Now, I need to get the last upgrade for this building that is essential, which is the next employee. But it's giving me a red marker, which means that... I will be losing money initially when this comes out. And I'm no longer last place, but it's not the worst. And we do succeed in getting her prego. Yes, pump out the babies. Pump them out. We need as many workers as we possible can. To name each one of the Malakas. Malakas 1, Malakas 2. <laughs> and I'm now making enough money with the business that I can actually afford to... We're not going to go collect some deer anymore. We're going to set Edith to... Because she is pregnant, boasting. Boasting... When you are pregnant, you gain a huge charisma boost, and charisma helps out your boasting. And when you're boasting, yep, that's right, you're going to be making some good old money. We're going to hire a new worker, and there we go. We've now got a full business up and running four characters and i should have should have sent my main character bukai there and then basically just served the customers that were waiting when we were afk but it's fine it's not the biggest of deals we can sell all these deer and we can make a nice chunk of cash now i'm not sure what to do with bukai i'm thinking to send him back to the grove as the date timer ticks over and we get a new child that is born, but, you know, this one, yeah, it's alright again, not really the best. Uh, not much we can do, not much we can do. I'm going to be building a second barber's hut now. The But I'm looking up here in Suburb, and I can't actually build it in here because Suburb is not considered a village, but considered a town, which is a little bit annoying. And, okay, so there's a barber shop here, and I'm wondering if I could just buy it outright, as it's in a decent spot, but, yeah, no, I'm not spending 5k on a barber's hut when I could just build it up myself and spell it, sell it for that much money anyway. So, we're going to be building a new barber's hut here, and right along this main road that seems to have a nice traffic flow. And I'm running Bukai up to the barber shop, because I don't have the cash to actually keep the barber shop running. I can't really afford to hire an employee right away. I might need to take Edith off of the boasting and which I realize I set her to manual so that I've hit it to automatic boasting. But 
I might need to take her off, go back to deer, and I need to do something to get this cash because I really, really am tight right now. Building the second business puts us very close to the bankruptcy, and it's hard. So I keep my main character to actually act as the initial worker, and I decide to, you know what, we're going to collect flowers to start. And then I realize, well, that's kind of dumb. And then I'm like, okay, well, why aren't you serving this customer? You're a worker, there's a customer, serve him. What's going on? And then I realize, oh, okay, so I hire a worker. No, you're not serving them. Why? What's going on? You need to have a task in there for it to serve. I wish that you could actually select attend to customers and give it directly to one of the employees. That would help out the service businesses to be completely less micro-intensive, and I would love to see it. Just by doing that, we automatically are already starting to serve the customers. That's all it took. And oh hi, I'm going to keep hitting the return to work, return to work, return to work. Now I'm just like, okay, just run to the barber shop. There's obviously something wrong with this pathfinding. Clearly I've run into a little bit of a bug on this early access version. And he's still got a long way to go. I'm looking at my initial one, the Let's Splash. As Let's Splash is... Everybody's collecting flowers right now, but the advantage that we have is only one person's come in waiting for service. So I'm thinking, I, would like, hmm, I, I need flowers. I'm just going to pull one person away. One, for now. For now is the key word. And then two comes. And then three comes. Like and then four comes. And then it's like, okay. I guess I'm just pulling all of you off and all you need to do is right click your barber shop they'll run towards it and then click on the resume work which i figure out later that's all you need to do and they will immediately go back to home dump off the flowers and serve customers i'm like yeah that's that's a long list of people they all need to come here pause resume working i really can't get away from here right now get up there get up there and you can see that someone's got the flu, and that is going to spread pretty fast everywhere up there. I'm thinking that the actual barbershop counts as healing, because later on when I build a... Nobody really gets injured or sick when they're getting cleaned, or it may not count as healing, but you don't... Sanitation helps prevent the diseases, from what I find. So a highly working barbershop tends to kind of make the... The herb hut not make as much money and there we go now bukai is serving customers and we can get through this long list of lo of characters some of them aren't going to get served that's just nature of the beast we will miss out on some but it's fine it's not the biggest of deals and oh, paying protection money i'm not liking that gotta get to citizen to hire a thug something i wish you could hire a thug from day one help protect yourself from thieves from day one and we're just going to go through that entire list within the sharpened scissors of people waiting for services. And it's going to give us the chunk of cash that we need. Going back to Let's Splash, you can see that everybody's gone back to flowers. And we've only got one person waiting. So I might just wait, gamble on the actual character. I don't really need them to sit down and wait. But, you know, it's fine. But if you guys have been enjoying this video, don't hesitate to give it a like, a subscribe, pass it on to your friends. If you hated it, pass it on to your enemies at a pure spite. If you guys would like to help support the channel, there's a link to a coffee shop down below where you can buy me a coffee. It'd be much appreciated. If you guys would like to join our Discord community, there's a lovely community down there. We'd love to have you. With that, take care, everyone.